Thank you so much for coming. It's going to be wonderful. I'm going to tell you what will become of you in this place. Because you are going to swim in the ocean of love. Be expecting something different. Because God is hovering here. Amen. Let's bow our head for prayer. Worship him and thank him you are here. <clears throat> Almighty Father, we worship and thank you. We bless you because you have planned this for us. Thank you because we can see your presence. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You have much in store for us. We are aware of this and shall see it. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our study is on God's banqueting table of love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. God's banqueting table of love. Yes, we have, we have a banquet before us. And that banquet is the banqueting or banquet of love. And the Lord shall set the table before you. Amen. You will eat and rejoice. Amen. You will love and smile. Amen. You will jump and Praise. Because God himself is interested to love you. In the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 2. Songs of Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 4. Yes, he brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Banqueting house. You remember, a, a, a Esther prepared a banquet for King Ahasuerus and invited Haman, and Haman boasted himself for being qualified to eat at the banqueting table of Esther. It was a great joy to him that he counted he was counted worthy to partake of such a feast. So much so a divine invitation. It is an invitation to divine love. Wonderful. Invitation. I want to introduce God to you. Amen? Amen? Have you seen anything that makes you happy? That makes you joyful in the purest form or in the pure form? A good thing that makes you happy. 
there is a fra- there is a part of God in that thing. Have you seen any man that delights you, makes you happy, loves you in a good way? There's God in that man. Have you seen any place on earth that is just so good? You like the place. When you are there, you feel high, you feel blessed. There's God in that place. Have you eaten some food that makes you laugh and smile? And say, this food is well cooked. It's, it's blessing me. I feel very blessed to see this food. There's God in that food. Have you, eat, have you seen a flower so beautiful? Beautiful flower. You, you were thrilled. It made you so happy. You love it. Because it is a live flower, you smell it. You were happy. There's God in that flower. Has somebody given you a blessed gift? A provoking gift? You were so blessed that tears came out of your eyes. You saw real love. There's God in that gift. What am I saying? Anything that is delightsome, anything that is good, anything that blesses you in the real sense of blessing, pure blessing, God is there. How is God described? The Bible tells us. In First John chapter 4, I read verse 7 and verse 8. First John chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Everybody who is God? Who is God? For God is love. He built himself into his creation. That property of love in the creation that you receive and feel blessed, God is showing you God. He's a lover. The property in the sun that satisfies you shows that the son is the handwork of a lover handwork of a lover greeting just mere greeting and smile that you receive from a fellow that blesses you shows that fellow is was made by god because that property that blesses is god is the nature of God. The wind, the water. What does water do to you? It refreshes you. It strengthens you. Makes you happy. That property of water that gives joy to you shows that water is made of God because God is that good portion of water. To your life. God is love. God is good. God is kind. God is gracious. God is 
that which makes you joyful, loving, happy, smiling, thanking, jumping, that is the property of God. So that is why you will see God always moving you. Speak a good word to that man. It is God. It shows, I created you. I put my property in your life. And that is the property of love. Speak a good word to that person. Please give good gift to that person. Do it. It's going to make him happy. I'm interested in making him happy. Say hello to that man. Say hello to that woman. Do something. Attend to that situation. Give a helping hand. This is coming from God because it is his nature. It is his nature. If we indeed will take on the fullness of God, we will be a bundle of love. For God is a bundle of love. God. That's what the Bible is saying here. Beloved, let us release God in our life. Release love in your life. Let us love one another. For everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. If you really love, because that property, the love comes from God. The property the mother exercises over her children. That property of law is God's. Is God. The property a man exercises, possesses, that manifests towards the wife. And the wife will say, my husband loves me. Loves me. Or somebody else who observes will say, ah, your husband loves you. That is God. If your husband therefore releases himself to more of God, there will be more of love. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. He that loveth not, refuses to love, refuses, then that person has no portion with God. Because God is love. Now, he brought me to his banqueting table, banqueting house, and his banner over me is love. Now, do you know what God has done to bring you here? All you will see here is love. All you will feel here is love. All you will be hearing here is love. God will make people to love you. He will make people to smile over your face. God will cause the wind of love to blow on you. God will make the atmosphere loving. The bed you are going to sleep on will communicate love to your life. He brought you to the banqueting house. And his banner over you is love. Yes. That's what we are letting you know. That is the nature of law. If you therefore will commit yourself in this place for this conference, you who are not here, you'll be in your Zoom there, in your Facebook, in the YouTube connected, that you commit yourself. The Lord is promising you something and that is love. In the book of John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I read verse 15. The word of God tells us thus. If ye love me, keep my commandments verse 21 he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him 
and I will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loved me, loved me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. I will love him and will show myself unto him. My father will love him and we will come and stay with him and make him a loving tabernacle. I will love him. Can you see what the Lord is promising you here? If you will have a heart to hear the word of God and love God by obeying them, Jesus is promising you real love. You will see love here. He will quicken love for you. Jesus is going to give you understanding. The darkness of your mind concerning Jesus will be removed. He will show you himself. Because you love his word, you are keeping his word. He will manifest real love for your life. He said, beyond me, my father who sent me will love him. God, the creator of your life, will love you. Mm. If God loves you, which human beings will not love you? He that can make even your enemies to be at peace with you. The one that can make even your enemies to be at peace with you. If God loves you, life is, is complete. Life is fulfilled. Life is joyful. If Jesus loves you, manifest his love over your life that I love you. You have satisfied my condition of love. You, are, you hear my word and you are keeping it. You're obeying it. Therefore, I am loving you. My father will love you. You don't know how wonderful I feel to be in the love of God. I feel great that Jesus loves me. I feel great that the father loves me. I feel great. Try it also. You will feel great. I said try it in your life. You will feel great. Yes, what a life of peace. God loves you. The Father loves you. You see how a child behaves. Freely, happily, when the child is convinced of parental love. Peace, joy. So, this is divine promise. The love God has for you. Is everlasting. When a man marries a wife, a wife he has loved is forever until he dies. The love God has for you is everlasting. In fact, <laughs> God wants to be looking at you, speaking to you, relating to you, happy with you, you being happy with him, and that will be forever. The love God has for you and wants to express it over you is not something that will finish in one day. It's not something that will finish in one week. Like after this conference, that's all. No. Is a covenant. He has been looking for somebody to love for long. 
to get you. Get you. Who also has a love, a heart of love for him. Wonderful. Love will meet with love. Forever. In Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31. I read verse 2 and verse 3. Thus saith the Lord. Jeremiah. Yeah. God will love you forever. The Lord will love you forever. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest, verse 3, the Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. The Lord wants me to let you know who have been in the faith that his love has not ceased over your life. Maybe you feel dry. You feel empty. Some, I don't know. Or you are afraid. Has God left me? He has not left you. It's forever. He brought you to himself forever. As long as you did not reject him. As long as you have not gone back to Satan. As long as you remain with God. He said, I should inform you. Love for you is forever. Yeah. With an everlasting love. That's what he said. The Lord had appeared of old unto me saying, Yeah. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. A love that will never end. You are going to see a revival of love over your life. Maybe for a long time. You see, you see as if the love, the love was buried. You couldn't see it on top of the waters. It looked buried. Love, that love of God that has been following you shall appear. The, the wise men that came to look for Jesus, the king of the Jews, were laid by a star. But at the time, they didn't see the star again. When they came to Jerusalem. But as they took on the way to Bethlehem, they saw the star. The star that led them to Jerusalem would lead them to Jesus. So, that love you saw, that love you received from God, which you, you couldn't find again, you will rediscover it. It will appear again. He, brought, he has brought you to this banqueting house. And his banner over you is love. He has, he has written upon you, you are wearing a badge, God's love, God's love, God's love, God's love. These are people I will love. Hallelujah. You know, you, have, you are wearing an, a, an unseen badge. Only angels are seeing it. And that badge is, how, what is written there? What is written there? The person God has decided to love. Hey, this is wonderful. This place, we shall see it. You shall receive it. So that's what the Lord says. The Lord had appeared of all unto me, saying, Yeah. I've loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I drew you from the world to myself for love, to show you the kindness of God. 
the love of God, loving kindness, and it shall be forever. So, that's what God wants you to know. Yes. He's going to love you to the end of your life. To the end of your stay in this life. He is, you are an object of love. Object of love. Don't mind. Batch, it, batch by batch. Messengers of love will be coming to you. Batch by batch. Acts of love will be flowing to you. Time to time. You will see it. That is what the Lord is saying. To the end of your life. In the book of John chapter 13. Verse 1. John chapter 13 verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He loved them unto the end. As for himself, in the body of a man, when he was on earth, he loved his disciples to the end of his life. Even when he went into crisis, he went into attacks, he went through the pangs of death, even in his dying moment, there was love. He was showing love to them. So, as for you, you are on earth. The Lord is saying, to the end of your life, to the end of your life, he will love you. You think you are alone in your husband's house. You who have terrible husbands, there is a lover that is looking over you there, day and night. Yes, in your workplace, there is a lover. His eyes are upon you. Only he's a wise lover. He wouldn't want to spoil you by doing things that you become, you become stubborn, you become careless. No, he's a wise lover. But he stands there to show you this love that I am with you. Don't fear. I don't know whether the three Hebrew children knew that he was in the fire with them. It's very likely they didn't know. They just saw that they were peaceful. It's likely he opened the eyes of Nebuchadnezzar to see himself there. And the other people would have not known. That is the problem. You do not know about this God of love that is by you by day, by you by night. It's always there. Your eyes are not seeing. It's like the man we have all been hearing that in a revelation, so as Jesus told him, his footsteps by the sand of the sea. And he saw, and Jesus told him, and as he saw the footsteps, there were four. As the Lord so showed him his journey towards, to, um, through the earth, since he gave his life to Christ. There were four footsteps. Uh, he said, but where are there four footsteps? He said, I never left you. I was always with you. Ah, I wish I knew this. Why was I afraid of kidnappers? Why was I afraid of assassins? Why was I afraid, too afraid of snakes? Too afraid of the wicked man? You were with me. Yes. 
Then he began to watch the footsteps until he saw where there were only two. Two footsteps on the, on the sand. So you left me here and went somewhere. Oh, these were my difficult days. The Lord said, yes. They were your difficult days, actually. And where you saw the two footsteps, difficult days, they were mine. Where was I? You were in my shoulder. <laughs> Hallelujah. He brought me to his banqueting house. And his banner over me was love. He has brought you to this international holiness conference. And his banner over you is love. Everybody say his banner over me is love. Exactly. And that's exactly what you're going to experience. He will identify with you in your problem. Only his own case is he is better than even your father, your mother, your husband, your parent is even better than pastor. Wow. Pastor can sympathize but may have no power to help except God releases it. The king said, how do I help you? When the woman cried, help, oh king. How? From where? King, there's no food, but then why do I get the food for you? But in the case of Jesus, he is going to share with you your burden and solve the problem. So, in this conference, problems will be solved. Look at it in the book of John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I read verse 5. Then verse 33 to 36. The Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. How many of how many people here? Three. Three. Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. They were the three people in the family. It's likely the parents had died, or the parents were in a village, and Martha came to the city. And his younger ones came to stay with her. Jesus loved them. Jesus loved them. Blessed for a house where Jesus loves the man, loves the woman, and loves the children. This is Jesus. Now, in verse 33, when Jesus, therefore, saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. In all your aff afflictions, he was afflicted. In all your pain, he feels the pain with you. I told you, he loves you. He feels the pain in the disappointment of your life. And you feel sorrowful. He feels sorrow with you. See it now. Lazarus had died and the sisters were crying. He groaned in the spirit. He felt it with them that Lazarus died. Verse 34, and he said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Let's read verse 35. 
the shortest verse in the Bible was a, a verse of love. Passionate love. God's passionate love for man. What is he? One, two, go. Jesus Christ. Verse 35 of John chapter 11. Again, one, two, go. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. Jesus wept. Jesus weeping. Love will make him weep. Love. You think he does not feel with you what Satan is doing in your life? You think he is unconcerned over what Satan is doing in your family? He feels the pain. You didn't hear that all those people he went with to hell to show them hell in Revelation when the people are crying from the pit of hell Oh Lord save me Lord save me and he tells them it's too late you didn't do that on time when you were in the region of safety. When you were in the region of salvation. When you were still on earth. How do you tell your lecturer to help you after the examination has been written? How will he do it? How? The paper marked. Which way did he help? It? Can a righteous lecturer help you? Except you are looking for sin. And you cannot make him sin. So, help me. It is too late. When you were on earth, you didn't tell me you needed help. But now, you have come to the region of damnation. The decree has been released. King Ahasuerus cannot, cannot reverse it. King Darius had signed the decree over Daniel and cannot reverse it. God had decreed by his word. The wicked shall be turned to hell and all nations that forget God. He cannot reverse it. Now as the people are crying, what does, what does he do? All that go to have this experience in hell and come back will say Jesus himself was crying. See these people now. I told them to repent. They refused. They have entered into the word of God, which cannot change. I can't do anything about it anymore. To reverse anything on them is that the, the, the whole heaven and the earth has to be recreated under another principle. It's not possible to reverse what has been done as it cannot, God cannot recreate heaven and earth under another principle. Because the principle of this creation is what God has said remains forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It cannot be reversed. You can't touch any part of this world. This, the creation is one. The creation, heaven, earth, seen and unseen, is one. So we can, he can temper with any part of it and it remains a creation. Perfect as he met it. So, he weeps. He laments over your life. As you're crying, he's crying. Then, the people noticed it. Jesus crying. Then some people said, that's why I say he's superior to pastor. Some people who saw him crying said, verse 37, and some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Yes. But he can do more than that. He has died, he will come back to life. He can do more than that. And so, 
Jesus now said, tell them, where did you lay him? They took Jesus there. And then, in verse 39, Jesus said, take ye away the storm. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, but this time he's thinking, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, wearing tears still in his eyes, in pity, he would do something over the situation to end this sorrow and recover joy. For God is love. He wants to do something to recover your joy, to recover your peace. To put laughter in your mouth. That you will speak like Sarah. God has made laughter for me. That's what God wants to do. And then Jesus said. Jesus said unto her. Said I not unto thee. That if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. This conference is the unity and glory of Christ church. You will see glory here. Yeah. All your love needs from you is believe. Don't doubt. He brought you here to wipe away your tears. Yeah. He brought you here to clean your eyes. He brought you here to remove that demon out of your life. Yes. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Peace, joy, rest, victory shall be your portion. Banqueting house. He brought me into his banqueting house. And his banner over me is love. How he will love me. How he will care for me. How he will bless me. That is what brought him. It's not how to kill you. No. As long as you set your heart seeking him. When they say, oh, let's destroy witches and wizards. Let's cast fire upon them. They're not talking to you who are looking for salvation from God. No, you're not the one. They're talking to some stubborn, wicked people who are not here for God. Not you who are here to serve him, to look for his salvation, to seek him with your whole heart. So don't be afraid. I say, ah, this place is a tough place. <laughs> I remember his story and I'm laughing now. Praise the Lord. Whether it's a comedian that said it or it was a real thing that happened is that a friend, a, 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 an Egyptian visited Nigeria and the friend took him to mountain of fire. And during prayer, the, man, the, the prayer leader came to the, to the, to the stage and said, all Egyptians must die. <laughs> quickly, <laughs> quickly, this man got out of where he was. I was whisking himself out of the church. Because they have declared that all Egyptians must die. Praise the Lord. He didn't know that the mountain, fire, mountain of fire were talking about evil Egyptians. <laughs> It's evil Egyptian. He was not the one. So they pursued after him. Said, what happened? He said, no, they said, oh, Egyptian monster. <laughs> God has good for your life. You will see it. I say you will see it. He brought me into his banqueting house. And his banner over me is love. I'm talking about you. 
I say I'm talking about you. Love all the way. So, that is it. And when they took away the stone, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heardest me always. But because of the people who stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he does have spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! There shall be power manifestation here. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave cloth, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. You shall be loosed from anything that binds your life. You will be going back free. He brought me to the banqueting table and his banner over me is love. He brought us to his banqueting table and his banner over us is love. He brought us to his banqueting table and his banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. Thank you, Jesus. You will do greatly. You will do great greatly. The Lord will release his blessings of love upon you for your love for his name. You love him. You want him. In the book of Psalm, one, Psalm 91, Psalm 91, God appreciates love. God appreciates your love. Verse 14. Oh, let me read from verse 9. Then to verse 16. Because thou hast met the Lord which is my refuge. Even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The, long, the young lion and the dragoon shall thou trample on their feet. Because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. And I will show him my salvation. Is it not the voice of love? Is God not talking to you? Exactly. You love God. How many care about him in this life? In this world? How many? Even in this city? How many? Buddha, in this country? In Africa? How many? In Europe? In America, in Asia, for you to come for God, he said he will give you attention. He's going to do some work in your life. He's going to lift you up. 
He's going to clean you up. So that people should know you are not serving a, a God that can do nothing. He was serving a God that is the owner of heaven and the earth. You have been working for him. The Lord has brought you here to remember you. Because of your labor, he has prepared this conference and made this banquet to receive you. King Ahasuerus made a banquet for his, is it 127 provinces? He brought their leaders together and made every kind of wine, every kind of food, every kind of whatever is eatable, every kind of thing that look beautiful, every kind of what to refresh them. Because they have been ruling with him in his uh, cabinet. So he wanted to show appreciation to them. He wanted to bring before them anything that will excite them, anything that will make them happy, make, make them feel fine. This is a human being. What about God? Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have shot toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. God knows. He said, come ye yourself apart. I want to refresh you. In this conference, he will be refreshing his ministers. Some of these ministers have some sicknesses that look attached to them and are troubling them, the Lord will handle them here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of them have needs. Needs, heavy needs. Some of them are into spiritual battle. The devil is against them. The Lord will refresh them with victories. He is sending upon you, servant of God, an angel of refreshing. Amen. This angel shall refresh you, Amen. shall strengthen your bones, Amen. shall clean up your lungs, Amen. shall wash your intestines. Amen. These angels shall communicate spiritual visions to your life. They shall recover you. I said they shall recover you. Whereas you say you are weak, the Lord says, say to the weak, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. You are going to be strong and walk more for Jesus. Joy and joy and joy. I told you I'm very happy because God loves me and it's refreshing me, renewing me all the time. So that's what he's going to do to you too. Amen. That is the banqueting house the Lord has brought you onto. The Lord loves you because you are in the right place the place of his love. It is his covenant. It is his promise to give attention to this place. Holiness, revival, movement, worldwide. He told me, dedicate this place to the Father, to God the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It shall be a refreshing place actually. And this place, as you're sitting, is dedicated to the living God. Amen. You will meet with him here. Amen. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6 to verse 9, Deuteronomy, you begin to wonder, why, why, why here? There's a covenant behind this place. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We read verse 6. The scripture says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. For holiness, for holiness, stop that, for holiness, the Lord has chosen this place because of holiness. We have given attention to holiness. Therefore, God also has given attention to us. That's why he's saying, for thou art an holy people. See the women. See their dressing. Is the daughter of Jezebel sitting near anybody there? Hmm. You see? And the ones that are coming shall resign from their offices. All the daughters of Jezebel that are coming, they will see a good example. And they shall change. They shall change. Amen. By watching you like this, they will change. Amen. How will God not love you? Look at this men that are here. Precious men. These are original men. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So God is happy. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in, in number than any people. For ye were the few ways of all people. See how few we are. Many will be meeting in hundreds of thousands. Even in this uh, uh, December time. But how few. All, although we feel everywhere here will be filled as the people come, but it's still few. It's still under 20,000. But the Lord says, I forgot about multitudes. And I came to you. And I say, you are my people. Amen. You are my people. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. But because the Lord loves, loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. Had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage. From the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Listen, holiness revival movement is not a thing that started today. It was in divine plan. It had been long. The Lord has made a promise to some ancient people, ancient people about it. This is what I will do. This is what I will do. There were people praying for revival of the world. Revival of the end time. And the Lord came to those people and said, I have heard your prayer. I am going to bring out the people. I am going to Bring them out to the world. I will start. And they sh you shall. You will not hear of them. Some of you will die. You will not see. That's what the Bible says. Many desire to see these things. And have not seen them. Many prophets. Many righteous people. They, have, they prayed for this revival. But they died. They never saw it. Many prayed for the coming of Christ. 
but didn't see when he came. The prophets prophesied about him. They didn't see when he, come, he came. That's what Simeon, Simeon was towards his end. He said, now I can die. Now let me die. My eyes have seen the Lord's salvation. So people prayed for end time revival. People prayed for recovery of the church before the coming of Christ. And the Lord made a promise. I will raise up people. I will raise up the church. I shall call it holiness revival movement worldwide. Even the devil had been looking for it to come forth. The devil had been threatened by it. Now we are in the camp. Everybody call the name. That is the name the devil hated to hear. But it has come out. He cannot control it anymore. He must give way. I say Satan must give way. That is why you are seeing this special, special attention from God. Special attention coming from him to us because we are the children of his vision. Yes. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God who keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Now we know that God has kept covenant with those people and now movement has come up. The holiness revival movement. He too wants us to maintain the holiness that is making him love us. That is making him care for us. That is making him to Give us more attention. Maintain it. He's a God of covenant. God of agreement. If we make, make agreement to continue with him, he will continue with us. And if he delays, uh, well, from all I have understood, uh, he is meeting us in our lifetime. The rapture is coming in our lifetime. But let's say, suppose he delays, our children shall be in the revival and continue revival unto the third and fourth generation. Yes. That is the work of God. That is what the Lord has promised. For the Father himself loves us. Now, what is God promising to do to us and to do to you as a person, Hosea chapter 2, what God will do to you and do to us, Hosea chapter 2. God will do something special in your life. In my life, in our life. Hosea chapter 2, verse 19. Hosea chapter 2, verse 19. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yeah, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. This is what the Lord is saying. With loving kindness I have drawn you. He said, I'm going to make you my own and I will make you righteous. The mistakes of your life that you were doing before you came to this place, the mistakes of your life, the Lord will cleanse you from those mistakes. The weaknesses of your life that you manifest, the Lord has brought you to a place and to show you love. 
the witnesses of your life will be turned to strength. Righteousness shall clothe you. You will leave this place going back with strength to do the will of God. I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yeah, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment. The Lord will make you know his word. You will understand the word of God. Preaching will be clear to you. It's going to make it very simple. Do you know you are in a place called the ABC of biblical truth revealed? What did I say? Say it again. Abba child of biblical truth. <laughs> it is, you will just know it's simple. You will know it. No ambiguity. Revealed by word. Revealed by gift. Revealed by life. That is it. And so, God is going to cause you to know his word. Amen. And I will betroth thee unto me in loving kindness. I've told you already. Love. Kindness of God. And in mercies. Mercy. In fact, beyond. It is, it is what you do not qualify. But the Lord will show you mercy. Amen. Amen. Do you know something? When a lecturer wants to help his uh, students, there is a pass mark, and the students have not reached there. The pass mark, maybe let's say the pass mark is 50. And see, here are the students. They are in 40, 43. I will show them mercy. I will add 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 to all of you. If you are 41, it will be 51. If you are 42, it will be 52. If you are 43, 53, 45, 55, 49, 59. You pass. I say you pass. The Lord shall increase your righteousness. Power is coming down to increase your righteousness. He will show you mercy. He will show you mercy. It's a promise. He will show you mercy. Yes. You who would have gone to hell and Satan is waiting. If your name will be removed from that book. You are no more in failure. You have succeeded. He will show you mercy. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. Wonderful. I'm going to make you faithful. You have been failing me. Now you won't fail me again. I will build into you a property of success. A property of victory. A property of stability. You'll be faithful. You won't... No, all this immorality that after you come to the Lord, hey, I don't know why it's happened. I don't, it shall not happen again. Yeah. All this anger that you have been manifesting, you have come to God. The Lord will carry oppression. Yeah. He will open that heart and know where that anger is. Yeah. That bile of anger shall be operated upon. Yeah. He will cut it out of your life. And then he will ask somebody, go and slap her. Somebody will come and slap you. Bah! Instead of, eh, 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 before. Uh -uh. Hey, God bless you. <laughs> I'm telling you what the Lord will do here for you. He brought you to the banqueting house. And his banner over you is 
Lord. Yes. To do you good. To do you good. That's what the Lord is promising. That's what the Lord is going to perform in your life and make you a wonderful Christian. <laughs> Somebody shared with me because I, I told the person to come for this conference. He said, the husband is saying, all these conferences you have been coming, which change have I been seeing in your life? May God hear that thing from heaven. I said, let God hear that thing from heaven. Change is going to come down to this place. All women, touch yourself and say, change is coming upon my life. Say it again. For why must they be accusing the house of God? Because that you didn't change. It can never happen like that. All these servants that are saying, this my master has been going for conference, no difference. When he comes, we will think that the voice will go down. The voice seems to go. Ah. God will hear from them. Change is coming upon this man. Man, I want you to lay your hand and say, change is coming upon me. Yes. Yes. That is what the Lord is going to do. He will betroth you to himself. And do special work in your life. Yes. And it shall come to pass. Now look at what he said in verse 20. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. And thou shalt know the Lord. This is the most important of the whole thing. Because many are moving, they don't know the Lord. They don't understand. In fact, many even of the leaders, God, where is he? They don't know the Lord. But God says, here, I will show you myself. I will show you myself. You know, I told you this story. I said, when I was in the, in the school, in the university, I attended a conference and the Lord came to me and said, what do you want me to do for you in this conference? I said, God, this was in 1986. I think so. I said, God, I want you to confirm your call upon my life. I know you have called me, but I want you to confirm it. And I didn't know what, how the confirmation would be. He said, I have heard you. But keep yourself clean, righteous, holy. I will do what you said I should do for you. How will God do it? I didn't know. He did it beyond my expectation. The following day, a particular preacher came out, a woman, a white woman that was invited and began to speak in tongues. And we waited for her. After she spoke in tongues, it was a message in tongues. Then it was a man that came to, in, to interpret the tongues. And in the interpretation, it was a bigger crowd, maybe three times this crowd or four times this crowd or three times or two times, what bigger crowd. He said there are 10 people here. God has called them to the Christian ministry. And they know themselves. And the Lord said they should come out so they can pray for them. We came out. I stood from that place because 
I am one of them. Oh, that, I knew that I was one of them. Whoever knew to stood up and stood up and stood up, we came to the altar. And uh, you know, I am a calculator. I just bent down like this to find out how many people had come. And we were 10 men that, was, that were there. The 10th man came with his wife. I said, God, now I know you have called me to service. Now I know. So, that is what the Lord is saying. He will want you, he will make you to know what he's talking to you about. You will get it clearly here. You who want to marry, and the Lord has been talking to you about marriage, get ready, confirmation. The Lord shall bring it forth. This God, for this God, is our God indeed forever and ever he will be our guide from now trust him even to the end that is it this is the God we serve and you shall know the Lord. He said, I will manifest myself unto him. And we will abode in he with him. So you will know the Lord. And then he said, concerning your prayers, that you shall pray. In verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, said the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And this is the day. Spend time in prayer. You are in the Lord's banqueting house. He has prepared a table before you to answer your prayers. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Right here. Don't mind what enemies are doing. You find time for God. Don't allow that person to distract your attention. Remember the revelation the Lord gave that two women were in the room. Do you remember that revelation? One was getting ready to pray and the other one was an, was an agent of the devil. But they were in the same room and he said, if I allow this one to pray, I won't find my time again. Let me distract his attention, her attention. And started manufacturing things. Whatever manufacture is coming up, don't listen to it. This field, as you see, is for prayer. I said, we have come ground, Terminal B, or <laughs> over there. But somebody said it should be Terminal C because across the road should be Terminal B, that that other one should be Terminal C. Do you agree? Pray, you will go there. Many good things are waiting for you there. <laughs> So that's what we're talking about. The place is ready. The house of God is ready for prayer. Make sure you pray. For the Lord has said, this invitation he has given to you is for prayer. That he will hear the heavens. And the heavens shall hear the earth. Anna. Pray through. Hannah. Pray through. And got, child, got her child. And five others followed. Go and pray and get your blessing. That's why you're here. And you in Zoom, create time for yourself. Spend time before God. Get it well. 
you in the Horemo television, you will spend time pray, get it right. How many of you have started using or entering Horemo television? Ah, the people have not known. That's why the coordinators should keep on telling the people we have Horemo television running 24 hours every day. www.horomotv.com You will find yourself there. Amen? Amen? That is how it is. And the conference will be running live. So, that is what the Lord is doing in our life. Yes. The queen of Sheba said something. And that is true of holiness revival movement. In 1 Kings chapter 11. First Kings chapter 11. Chapter 10 rather, chapter 10, verse 1. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones and when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. How be it? I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes have seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I had. Happy are thy men. Happy I this thy servants which stand continually before thee and that hear thy wisdom. Now verse 9. Everybody want to go. Blessed be the Lord thy God which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel because the Lord loveth Israel forever. Therefore, made he the king to do judgment and justice. The queen of Sheba came from Ethiopia all through to Jerusalem to meet Solomon because of what he had heard. The wisdom God gave Solomon. When she came, she saw various things. The structures. Wonderful. The house of Solomon. She saw the beauty of Solomon's temple. She saw the manner in which Solomon in and his cabinet worked into the temple 
for the service of God. Great. And among the cabinets, he saw how Solomon addressed his people, the wisdom of words that Solomon released to the people and that the people always came before Solomon. The servants, he saw the comportment of the servants, the dressing of the servants. There was no strength in her. She didn't know what to say. She told Solomon, I've been hearing of your wisdom, your power, and your glory. I didn't believe it because I felt they were exaggerating it. But as I came now and saw with my eyes the glory and heard with my ear the wisdom, ah, I knew the accusation I was given over there that ah, they were exaggerating. The real thing was that the half of this thing was not told me. All they were saying was 50%. It's now I came to see the whole, the fullness. Ah, happy at this I mean. Are they aware of it? That I, queen in my nation, would have loved to have time. To be as one of them to sit under you and be hearing this divine wisdom. Happy are these thy servants that sit before you continually to hear your wisdom. It's because the Lord loves Israel. For a man like you to be a ruler, God loves Israel. Israel that he made you to be king over Israel to give Israel this glory among the nations of the earth brother sister this is also to be said on holiness revival movement worldwide God loves mankind to raise up this movement. God loves the church to raise up this movement. God loves you to raise up this movement and to raise up the leadership he has given in this movement. And for the weights the Lord always releases into this movement. The knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the revelations, the visions. Truly, the Lord loves you. And he has brought you to his banqueting house. And is ready to pour love over your life. He's ready to pour love over your life. The father of the prodigal son said, remove the rag from him and put a new dress on him. You will be dressed in a new way. The Lord will do this thing. You are welcome. Tell the brother he is welcome. Tell your sister she is welcome. And you who are there over there in the Zoom, we welcome you. Make sure you always take your position. Something great is going to happen. Amen. Something great is going to happen. Amen. Amen. He brought me to his banqueting house, banqueting table, and his banner over me is love. Can we rise up and sing? He brought me to his banqueting table, and his banner over me is love he brought me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is love 
He brought me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Everybody want to go. He brought me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is love. He brought me Is love. The Lord will bless someone today. 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 It will be you. It will be her. It will be someone by your side. It will be you, it will be him, it will be someone by your side, by your side. Not that it may be, it will be. It will. By my side. Hey, the Lord will bless someone today. 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 It will be you, it will be him, it will be someone by your side. It will be you, it will be me, it will be someone by our side, by our side. One more time. It could be you. Oh, yes. It could be someone 
by your side it could be you it could be I it could be someone by your side it could be you oh yes it could be someone very close to you it could be you oh oh it could be someone by your side the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4300. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. You can. You purchased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. Because you are my Lord and Savior. You are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. Lord, because you are the living Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Savior. Jesus, I believe.